to welcome to the show Chris Swift of Swift Trading Incorporated in Nashville. And thanks for joining us here, Chris, as we take a look at our early morning uh, grain trade here, here first. On the corn, uh, we have had the corn with pressure overnight of several cents. And as we get into the daytime session here, let's take a look at where we are. Uh, when we opened, we were about one and three quarters lower. Now we're starting to sag a little bit once again. And so we have the May contract down three at 319 and a quarter in December, down three and a quarter at 340 and a quarter. So that's what the corn is up to. If you look at the soybean trade now, you have the May down two and three quarters and July down three and a quarter. You have November new crop soybeans dropping by two and three quarter cents. We're at 848 and a quarter there. Wanted to look at the soy products here as well. Soy meal, we have the May contract $1.80 lower at 286.40 per ton. And then if you look at the soybean oil, a lot of times that has guidance from Malaysian palm oil overnight, and I heard it was lower. So here we have soybean oil lower again, and May is down 19 points. July currently down 20 points at 26.47. And then we get to the wheat, and this is its own different story today. We've been talking about it all morning. Look at May Chicago wheat now 24 and three quarters higher at 558 and a quarter. In the Kansas City market, we're 23 and three quarters higher on the May at 502 and a half. And Minneapolis wheat so far this morning is trading 12 and a quarter higher at 519 on the May. And uh, big gains in that wheat complex this morning. So what are you hearing? What's driving this wheat market while the other two, uh, the corn and soybeans, are dragging their feet today? I think a lot of it is still due to Russia. Russia had put quotas on a lot of their exports, and they are running through those ra ra rather rapidly. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing for wheat, and, and it's been a little bit firmer and more friendly than all, the other two grains for weeks in advance just because of probably that issue, and we know we don't have as many acres out there. And, and bread has become a very popular item at the stay-in-home you know, venue now that we're all staying at home and more baking is taking place. So I can see where that, that pull from the, uh, the wheat market is a little bit heavier due to that. Well, on the charts, if you look at the wheat, I mean, that is a massive upward move just today. <clears throat> and now it's getting up there in the neighborhood of retesting some of those recent highs again. Yeah, it is. Uh, 560, uh, I think 568, 569 were those two previous targets. Uh, 567 and a half. So once you start getting above up in there, um, then I could see where we could you know, easily break up into some new territory there. And, and with corn setting new, almost new uh, six-year lows, I think 301 is the uh, current six-year low, you're, you're within just change of that right now. So maybe we're starting to see a little bit more of the wheat, too, um, in that you got so much cheap feed out there for the corn that, uh, that the wheat market is taking a little bit of an advantage off for the, uh, for the domestic human market. I wanted to take a look at uh, the oats market. A lot of times they say uh, oats knows. And we have to wonder what it knows. It looks like it's very confused today, where we have the May up a penny, July up a penny, September, though, down three. So uh, whatever it knows, it seems to be kind of scatterbrained today. If you look at the cotton market so far, you have everything higher. And now you have July cotton up by 48 points. We're at 53.34 this morning. Meanwhile, in the canola market, a firmer tone in most contracts, the May is up 20 at 456.40 per metric ton. We'll be back in a moment and we'll take a look at our livestock trade with Chris Swift right after this. Okay, let's dive into our livestock trade. We start with the live cattle board right now and we opened up mixed. We are maintaining a mixed stance right now. April live cattle down 42. We have the June contract 17 lower at 86.12. Make it 12 lower now. And then the crossing point seems to be the August. Right now, it just moved from unchanged to one tick higher. We're up two and a quarter, or excuse me, two and a half cents at uh, 91.12 per hundred weight there. The deferred's slightly higher. Now, if you move on to the feeder cattle market so far this morning here, uh, it's uh, showing the feeders on the nearbys up 90 cents on the April. And you have the May contract 40 higher. We're at uh, 119.67. So higher across the board, but really not uh, by a whole lot as far as that goes. And then if you look at the lean hog trade, let's look over there. We have the lean hogs higher everywhere. Uh, we have the May now 248 higher. Look at that June contract up 348 at 4720. Uh, looks like it has been almost 30 cents higher than that. You know what that means? It must have touched the limit up, the new limit up of 375 there, Chris. Um, you know, the, something that we looked at in the hogs, it was very disproportionate 
for years and years, we'd always traded a negative basis to the summer months to the index. This year, we flopped it back the other way, and we've traded a positive basis in the front three contracts for quite a while. Now we've got the lean hog index at the lowest level since 2003, and we start noticing the futures are picking up just a little bit, and we're seeing some convergence in basis this week. The, you said that's the first time since 2003. That's a very significant uh, uh, an achievement there, if you can call it that, or a benchmark anyway. So we have heard some talk earlier this morning that there seems to be such um, a risk-reward uh, opportunity in the uh, crude oil market. It seems like maybe it's kind of a similar thing going on in the hog market right now. Would you agree or not? Um, I don't know. The, the crude oil market is very skewed. We've got the front end of it trading at $11 and less than five months out trading at $31. So a 200% increase in less than six months is a pretty hard pill to chew, but that's the way the market is uh, skewed right now. Um, I think it's a very dangerous market to be participating in. All right. Uh, I wanted to check out as well what's going on here in the uh, energy market. So let's take a, another look at that crude oil trade that we were talking about earlier. I kind of got everything, uh, got the ball rolling early on in the day where we had it under $11.00. The May is at 1075 per barrel, down 752. And remember, that one expires tomorrow. The June will take over. It is down 235 at 2268 per barrel right now. And of course, a lot of I, uh, a lot of eyes here on the Dow this morning. It is still down over 400 points. We're down 415 at 23744 as it stands right now. So, Chris, thank you for the analysis this morning. Good to visit with you. And uh, stay healthy out there. Chris Swift of Swift Trading Incorporated in Nashville. Janet?